Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. I'd like to show you how to do table table joins in KSQL. This is a brand new feature as of Confluent Platform 5.0. Now, you probably don't really need me to explain table table joins to you since most of us have done these in relational databases before. They really are quite similar in KSQL. In this case, we're going to be joining warehouse locations to warehouse sizes. Now, what's different is that these tables are backed by Kafka topics. So let's take a look at those. Here's the topic underlying the warehouse location table. You can see the warehouse ID and the location. Simple enough. Uh, likewise with the topic underlying the warehouse size table. We see a warehouse ID and its square footage. So. Let's create the warehouse location table with the KSQL create table statement. You see, we provide the table metadata, that's warehouse ID, city, country, and point KSQL at the underlying Kafka topic containing the data. That topic is, like any other topic, an unbounded sequence of events. But in this case, the events are really updates to a particular key. Uh, what key is that? Well, that's warehouse ID, which we specify in the create table statement. What we're really saying is that we want to think of this topic more like a change log and use that change log to update the rows in the table. Each time there's a new message in the topic, the value of the corresponding row in the table gets updated with the value of that message according to the message's key. That's what this create table statement does. Also note that the Kafka topic itself has to share this key structure. Remember that Kafka messages are themselves key value pairs. To be able to turn a topic into a table, the messages in that topic need to use the table's key as their message key. You can see that row key and warehouse ID are the same here for all three of these messages, so we're good. If you try to declare a field in the message as your table key and the actual message key of the Kafka messages don't match it, then the joins won't work. So be careful. Now let's create a table for warehouse size, which looks very similar to the warehouse location table. Before we continue though, let's set auto offset reset to earliest. Uh, that makes demos like this a lot more exciting. Uh, this means for any new queries, KSQL will start looking at data from the beginning of topics rather than the most recent messages in them. It's not a common production setting, but believe me, it is totally a common demo setting. Now let's just verify that our keys are set up correctly. Comparing row key, which is the native Kafka message key, to warehouse ID, which is our business key, we see that they are identical for our location table. If these were different, it would be bad, but they're the same, so we're good. Now let's write a query that joins these two tables. We've got warehouse ID, city, country, and square footage. We're joining location to size on warehouse ID and just looking at the first three results. With that, we see that joins, in fact, work. We can turn this into a permanent table just by adding a create table as to the beginning and providing the table name. Now that query will be running in the background, constantly producing new records to a Kafka topic called Warehouse Unified. We can see the persistent tables we've defined with the show tables command. Each one of those tables is backed by a Kafka topic with the same name as the table itself. Let's take a look at what's in Warehouse Unified. There we see the three records we expect joined one to one from the two tables. And just to drive the point home, let's look at the underlying Kafka topic. The raw data is a little less pleasant to look at, but there it is. Now let's look at what happens to a table table join when we add data to one of the two topics. I'm going to run that query on Warehouse Unified again, then split the screen and get a KSQL CLI going in the second pane. Down in that pane, I'm producing a fourth JSON message to the warehouse location topic using the Kafka cat command running in the Docker container. And you see right away in the top pane, the new row shows up in the query of the table, but the size column is null. Well, that makes perfect sense because we only created a new location, but didn't create a new size in the size table. So let me add a row to the warehouse size table. When I do that, we see the top pane will get a new result. Warehouse ID 4, or Oslo, now has a size. 
But notice how right now it looks like there are five rows in the table with two of them for Oslo. Well, Oslo is a little like the Highlander in that there can be only one, and in fact, there is only one. If we run that query again fresh, we'll see just four rows and only one Oslo. That old row has been updated with the new square footage. And if you've been paying attention to that first column, that's the timestamp, that timestamp increases with each change we make since time has been marching on and we've been recording that. What happens if we change a record? Well, here I'm emitting a new message into the warehouse size topic saying that Oslo is actually 33,000 square feet. Uh, surely in Oslo they'd use square meters, so my apologies, but we continue. As soon as we emit that message, we get a new row in the table up above. The size of the Oslo warehouse has changed. Once again, if I rerun the select from scratch, we get only the current state of the table, which is four rows with Oslo at 33,000 square feet. When you get down to it, table table joins in KSQL act just like table table joins in any relational database you've ever used. It's a concept you already know, but with a twist, that these tables are abstractions on top of Kafka topics. But hey, try them out for yourself and let us know what you think. And if you're getting started with KSQL or you just want to continue your education, go to confluent.io slash KSQL for more.